Hey, what's up everybody? Your old pal Mage at it again. That's right. You're here. You're stuck here at the Square of the Circle Music Channel. Uh, over here in Western Oregon, it's a very chilly evening. We're getting down into, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't say not close to the teens, but it's going to be in the 20s the next few nights. So uh, everybody bundle up. Uh, we're in for the long, dark, cold one. Uh, so... Um, Last night I made mention I was doing my um, my fun little uh, Tales from the Junk Store thing that I do. Um, anyway, throughout that long <laughs> excursion of an episode, I always drag you guys through the mire, don't I? Um, when I was uh, rambling on and on about everything, I made mention of how I wanted to challenge myself um, and I really, yeah, I'm going for it, going to do it. So um, I talk incessantly on my channel about that fantastic record label, uh, Wyndham Hill, from the, you know, uh, late 70s through the late 80s into the early 90s. I mean, they still, in a sense, in some way, shape, or form, or faction, or whatever, were, like, releasing music through a secondary uh, entity. I'm not sure. Somebody bought someone in the early 90s um and then um they still were putting out music somehow and then i don't know exactly what happened so that's something for google for anyone who gives a shit uh <laughs> you can look up the history of windham hill records but basically the bulk of their catalog released from 1978 through 1991 um and yeah, I just adore all of it. It's fantastic. I grew up on it, you know. I'm from, you know, Springfield, Oregon, neighboring city to Eugene, Oregon. The whole place is just one big, you know, <laughs> ridiculous, greasy, you know, hippie fest, you know, and especially in the 70s and 80s with the New Age movement. Um, everyone adopted those sensibilities um, with their musical tastes as well. And jazz, you know, influences married with, you know, folk and hippie influences and you just create you get this kind of like great amalgam of just uh instrumental kick-ass nerd music <laughs> i love it um like, like i said i grew up on it it was in in the house when i was growing up but my father listened to jazz and loved jazz but my mom didn't but my mom appreciated all things like folk instrumental new age you know uh electronica uh, those types of real kind of cool experimental types of things. Mom really appreciated that shit, and Dad was more of like a, a jazz guy. But this, you know, was a fantastic marriage of both those styles of music. Uh, ironically, and a silly metaphor to use, I guess, you know, my mother and father. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's where I come from. So I just adore this record label. And, you know, I heard wind of a, a gentleman on the in the VC. Uh, Chris Profi had mentioned, I guess, that he wanted because he's a, the type of dude that also likes to collect entire catalogs and stuff. I've read about his SST collection, and or not read, but I mean, I've watched him um, go through like his punk records and and other kind of really really cool shit that he has, and how he likes to get the entire catalog. Uh, so I was like, I can do that with the Wyndham Hill. You know, because I love that. And, you know, I already have like dozens. And then I did my research. <laughs> and it's not that overwhelming. But so basically, here's the nitty gritty, guys. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to piece all these together, piece, piece together the entire catalog from finds in the wild. Um, which I know is not going to happen, but, <laughs> um, you know, if I dug for another 10 years all throughout the Pacific Northwest, I could probably do it. Save maybe just, you know, two or three titles in this catalog, which in my, uh, from my calculations, according to my math, <laughs> um, I read up on Wyndham Hill's website about their, their catalogs, their releases, everything, um, catalog number WH, and then they have a slash C for some of the um, releases, like, in the first, like, five years of, uh, the existence of this label, but pretty much after that, everything was just the catalog letters WH from Wyndham Hill slash 1000, and then, you know, 01. So, everything 1001 through 1107, I believe, uh, is what we're looking at. And actually a smattering of those come to find were only ever released in CD format or on cassette. 
Um, and so I'm going to trim it down and I'm really only interested in collecting LPs. That's, I mean, I collect cassettes and CDs as well, but for me, that's more of kind of like a novelty thing when it comes to cassettes, because I love, you know, everything, you know, from my generation, from my childhood, that's all we had was, you know, um, cassettes. And so that's, that's just the medium that is fun and reminds me of my childhood. And I have a little boombox. I take, you know, cassettes down to the river. It's a really fun, easy, compact way to just, you know, some D batteries and just, you know, barbecue at the river with the kids and have great music to listen to all day long. So that's a lot. That's why I collect cassettes. That's a lot of fun for me. I collect CDs now. I mean, because again, that's part of my, you know, <laughs> generation, uh, was that digital compact, you know, quality, um, wherein we took it for granted. And I used to just fucking throw those things across the, the street, you know, like Frisbees, you know, mom's, you know, 99 cent CD collection of like classical hits and shit. Like I used to actually do that. Like what a terrible fucking <laughs> shit kid I was. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my point being, I really am only interested in getting this catalog, um, uh, an LP format. So there's, you know, save, like I said, a smattering of just kind of like a few CD releases and cassette releases, maybe like five of them, I think I counted, something like that, four or five of them. Um, I'm just gonna kind of scrap and forget about. And I'm only gonna go for the LP, so that leaves me what, maybe about 103, 104, something like that. I'm gonna try to find them all in the wild. Um, it's gonna be super difficult, even for the common ones, because they're just not, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of selections that are very, very prevalent, like the ones that they just mailed to people for free. All of those samplers and just everything that George Winston put out and everything that William Ackerman put out, like there's just, that shit's everywhere. But there's these weird little ones just all throughout that 104, you know, piece catalog that I'm going for. It's just like, these are, these fuckers are pretty rare and hard to find. Uh, one in, like one specific one that I had discovered that I never even knew anything about I think I've heard the name before. Uh, is it Bobby Basho or Rob, Robbie Basho? I think he's a folk guitarist. Um, he was putting out tons of records, but I think he only did one on Wyndham Hill. Uh, probably in like 80 or 81. Or, no, it had to have been earlier because it was catalog number three, 1003. So I think it was the third release on Wyndham Hill. So it had to have been probably 79. Um, beautiful cover art, black and white photography. Um, and it goes for like a couple hundred bucks. It's not that much. It's it's rare though. And there's only two copies I've seen for sale on Discogs and they're like $100. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Cause it was re-released on a different uh, label uh, just recently actually. Only like uh, about 20 years ago, I think. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to cheat. <laughs> I'm not going to go get some other dumb pressing. This is about Wyndham Hill. Uh, it's about Wyndham Hill's catalog. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to get a tried and true original pressing of that Basho album. Um, yeah, there's a few others that are pretty, pretty effing hard to get. But yeah, it, it means a lot to me to get all of them on LP because that's what I'm going for is that, you know, I, I buy Wyndham Hill because I love the art. Um, I love photography as an art medium. I love you know, all types of abstract and, um, you know, all types of painting and visual, you know, visual media and artistry. But, um, yeah, I've got them all. I've got them all here. There's the first chunk there. <clears throat> Another chunk here. Last third here. Fuck, guys. I only have 42. <laughs> have I thought dude I thought I swore that I had way more than that I've only got 42 um and those are all just you know um most a huge majority of them like all of the samplers there's at least 10 samplers or more um because I'm not talking about just the the uh the year samplers like the 81 83 85 86 88 89 samplers um, there's the guitar sampler, the keyboard sampler, the electronic sampler, whatever. I've had those for decades. The Mark Isham, because I grew up on Mark Isham and I adore him. I've had a, they're my mom's Mark Isham records. I've had those for 30 years or more. Um, and the Shadow Facts. I've carried around Shadow Facts, all of my Wyndham Hill Shadow Facts stuff for decades as well. So, and there's a few other kind of here and there, but a lot of these I've collected just in the last, like, I don't know, maybe five years. 
Um, and more so recently because I started getting like, you know, <laughs> kind of emphatic about it. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to try to get this. Like I've been, this has been in my head for years, actually. And now that I'm a member of the, I'm a card carrying member of the uh, vinyl community, um, we're going to have some fun with this. And it's good. we're going to challenge. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm not going to throw a challenge out there to anybody else, but if anyone else wants to jump on the bandwagon and try to get this Wyndham Hill catalog uh, sealed before I can, <laughs> we'll see. But like I said, I'm going to do my very, very damnedest to get it all from the wild. Uh, so it's going to take a long time. I'm not going to, you know, it's pretty easy to just get on Discogs and probably probably only cost you maybe like 150 to 200 bucks. Save that Robbie Basho album. You know, outside of the Robbie Basho album, all the rest of them are very garden variety. And the prices reflect that. Um, they go for $3 a piece, <laughs> sometimes less. Uh, but even then, you know, you could probably get online, order 20 hits from somebody and pay $5 in shipping. And there you go. You just got, you know, 10% <laughs> of the catalog by all you had to do is go to Discogs and spend $30. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> like I said, all of these came naturally to me in the wild. I've already got a pretty good head start. That's practically, that's more than a third, more than a third of the catalog. So, um, yeah, fuck, I'm almost halfway there, to tell you the truth. So I guess I wasn't blowing that much steam up y'all, all, all y'all's asses. Um, yeah, because I, I basically said that I had ne damn near half of the catalog. And thinking of it that way, like I'm only going to get the LPs, so that narrows it down to probably about 105. So... And I've got close to 50. <laughs> you see how I'm doing that, guys? My math, my shady fucking math. <laughs> yeah, that's how Americans do math. All right, boys and girls. Well, that's my Wyndham Hill episode. I'll uh, I'll do another installment here in a couple months and like keep you updated for anyone that gives a shit. Uh, but this will be a fun little challenge. And actually, these aren't in order right now, so I'm gonna I gotta go order them. I did go through everything, and you know keep a list now so i know what i need um and yeah i just gotta remember i put it in my phone i put it on my notes um you know my notes app in my phone so whenever i'm and i'll memorize it so whenever i'm thumbing through stacks at the junk stores i'll have those you know <laughs> the covers burned i've got a pretty good photo photographic memory it's not too bad i can remember just by the picture art and the photographs on the covers i can remember which ones i do and don't have but i have a feeling it's going to start getting really <laughs> difficult and hazy here as soon as i get about 10 or 20 more of these things so <laughs> all right that was fun guys um i'm gonna go get some dinner and um once again thanks for hanging out with me yours truly aaron major from springfield oregon signing out